Now, when we're looking at protein, one of the key things we understand is the leucine threshold. Leucine is what's called a branch chain amino acid. And that branch chain amino acid, particularly, there's three of them, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. Leucine is the primary driver of muscle growth in your body. And so whether you're looking to have, you know, stronger, uh, you know, larger muscles, or if you just want to be a good fat burner and be really healthy, be able to do all the things you want to do, you want to pay close attention to the amount of leucine that you consume. So the amount of leucine for muscle protein synthesis that you need is roughly three to four grams in a meal, right? So about three to four grams in a meal, which typically if you're getting good quality protein, particularly from like uh, like animal source, grass-fed beef, um, pasture-raised eggs, wild-caught fish, right? Some sort of good quality animal source. It's roughly, the key there is about 30 grams, 30 to 40 grams. Typ your typical complete protein source from whole food uh, is roughly about 10% leucine. Now, when we look at like vegetarian sources of protein, uh, some of them are not quite 10%. However, like if you're eating rice and beans and you can eat, uh, eat enough of that, you have to eat a lot of that, um, you can get to that leucine threshold as well, right? So again, about 30 grams roughly of protein per meal, 30 to 40 grams or so, is what you should be looking for. Now, there's a lot of people out there, and I'm also an advocate of this, we talk a lot about collagen protein or bone broth protein or drinking bone broth in general. Bone broth or collagen protein, even though it's from an animal source, has a lower amount of leucine in it, meaning that you're really not going to be able to get, it's very hard to get uh, you know, to that leucine threshold by consuming collagen or bone broth protein. But those proteins are still good for your body because they have a lot of proline, hydroxyproline, and glycine, which are really good for liver detoxification, really good for gut healing, right? So healing your intestinal lining, really good for your hair, your nails, your joints, right? So if you wanna have good, healthy hair, nails, joints, getting some collagen protein, maybe 20, 30 grams a day, is still a good idea, collagen or bone broth protein. Our ancestors, when they would eat an animal, they would eat a lot of the collagenous regions, right? So they would eat the joint, right? You think about like, um, like a drumstick, right? Or a, you know, a, a chicken wing or something like that. When you eat it, there's a lot of collagenous structures. You're actually eating the joint capsule, right? Or really you should, a lot of people avoid that. They, they eat around it, but they don't actually eat the joint capsule itself. That's where the collagen is. Our ancestors would eat that all the time when they killed an animal, they were eating the whole animal. And that used that that incorporated a lot of this sort of collagen protein, which was great for their joints, gave their joints more resilience, their gut lining, their hair, their skin, right? And then of course they were getting the muscle meat, which had a lot of the leucine in it, right? And so that was promoting the muscle protein synthesis. So you kind of want to get a little bit of a combination of both of those. But the key point here is getting roughly 30 maybe 40 grams of protein in a meal. Now, I'm also a fan of getting fat in there, right? And so what I like to do is what we call the 30-30 rule, right? In each meal that you consume, you're aiming for at least 30 grams of protein and at least 30 grams of fat. Now, there are some caveats to that. Like for example, if you don't have a gallbladder, right? Then you may need a little bit less fat because you need the bile that is stored in the gallbladder to really help emulsify those fats. So some people without a gallbladder, uh, if they consume 30 grams of fat, they feel very nauseous, they have loose stools, they just don't feel good, okay? So then we might lower it to 15, 20 grams of fat in that meal. But for most people out there, 30 grams of fat, that's really only 270 calories. So 30 grams of fat, nine grams of, or I'm sorry, nine calories per gram, it's 270 calories, right, of fat, and then roughly 30 to 40 grams of protein. There's only four calories per gram of protein, so four times 30 is 120. So altogether, you know, 270 plus 120, that's roughly 390 calories. Now you can consume a little bit more fat, a little bit more protein. I know for me, I consume two meals a day. When I consume those meals, I'm probably getting 50 to 60 grams of fat, 50 to 60 grams of protein in those meals to really 
get me the overall macronutrients that my body needs, the overall calorie load that my body needs. Now, here's what happens when we do that. When we get the right amount of fat and protein, right? And that's why I say the 30-30 rule, okay? It could be more, again, especially if you're a young, active male, maybe you're weightlifting like I am, you might need just more calories in general. But if you get at least 30 grams of fat, 30 grams of protein, you're not gonna have a whole lot of satiation room left for carbohydrates, for starches and sugars. And so therefore, you're gonna get the bulk amount of your calories from these fats and from the protein, and that's gonna make you feel very satiated, right? Protein is very, very satiating, fat is as well. And that means that you're just not gonna have the cravings or the hunger to go out and eat a bunch of starch, right? Eat a bag of potato chips or um, even eat a lot of root vegetables, which, which are you know, healthier sources of carbs. You're just not gonna have as much of an appetite for that. And so therefore, you're gonna have a lower level of carbohydrates. You're gonna stimulate more protein synthesis. You're gonna keep your insulin levels. Again, that's the fat storage hormone. You're gonna keep insulin down and you're gonna turn up fat burning. And again, build lean, strong, healthy muscle tissue.